Hello and welcome back guys. Okay, so let's finish up with this function, uh, this class here. So the remaining stuff is pretty straightforward. So let's see what we can do. So remember that we have uh, the result of this. Let's put that inside a URL like this. We'll capitalize it to make a difference with the other one. So this now contains an array of items in our URL. So let's begin to make use of them. So I want to get the very first item from there. Now, one thing I missed is that it's possible not to have any items in the URL. So let me show you that. So let me just uh, copy this for a second and undo. Okay. So if I go back here and refresh, you see that I have items here. But if I remove everything from there, I will have nothing. And then I get this error, which says undefined array key URL, because it's only available when there's something there. So in order to fix this, we just have to make sure that we set it to a value. So here what I'll do is I'll just say uh, URL like this is equal to and then I'll put an if statement to make sure that uh, if it's not there, then we can find something else to add. So this is where you would use what is known as a no safe operator or something like that, but uh, we won't use that. We we'll just do something simple like this. So we're going to say if is set this. Okay, so if that is set, we'll put a question mark and then we'll uh, we'll set it to whatever the value is. So URL like this. So if get URL is set, then let's set this to the same. If it isn't, I'll put a full colon there. I'm just going to set it to home. That way we go to the home page if nothing is there. And then I'll replace this with URL. So let me just remove this part and that part then it becomes this URL, this variable right there. So everything remains the same. It's just that now we are capable of handling a situation where we don't have that. So refresh and we have home. So if we don't have anything there, we have home. If we have, uh, let's say students like that, then it goes to students. Okay, pretty cool. Now, once we are done with that, we are sure that we will always have a default all we need to do now is find the specific file. Now we will be looking for these uh, class files inside what we are uh, a folder called controllers. So I'm going to right click here on private and say new folder. By the way, I didn't actually explain that this is a MVC format that we are following. So if I didn't make that clear, I'm making it clear now. This website follows the MVC format, which is model view controller. So we're going to have models, we're going to have views, we're going to have controllers. So this one will be the controllers. So controllers like that, enter. So inside private, we have controllers. That's where we'll have our files in there. So let me divert a little bit and explain how the system works with um, MVC in case you're wondering. So let's come back here for a second. So what we would do is, uh, let me get this brush. So we have M, V, and C. So the M is for models, okay? Yeah, then we have the views, and then we have our controllers, control. So what this simply means is that we're going to separate our files. Normally you have a website where you just have a page, another page, and another page, and all the code is in there. The database access code, um, every code that is supposed to work for that page, you have it in that single page. The only problem with that system is that in case in future, you want to change how you're accessing the database, for example, maybe one function has been deprecated from PHP, it becomes very difficult to change things because you have to go file by file to change things. If you change things in one file, it won't change things in another file. So that's a problem. So this is why we use MVC. That way, we, if let's say the database connection changes, we just go to a single file, change that, and the whole website is updated. 
So it makes updating very, very simple. And also it makes the files more organized. So we separate the view, which is, the view is just what the user sees, the UI, right? The user interface. So this user interface contains no logic in there. There's no date, there's no uh, uh, code to connect to the database. There's no calculations in there. It's just there to display the result. So this is what the view does. And then the model is what does all the calculations and connecting to the database. So this will connect to your DB, for example, do all the calculations that you need to calculate. If you need to crop images, you do them in the model. And then by the time they get to the view, everything has already been done, okay? The controller is the one that chooses what view to show and what model to use. So the controller gets its instructions from the URL. So whatever is in the URL, that's the command that the control should follow. So it will be like, okay, um, <clears throat> in the URL there's students, so I'll find the, uh, the student's model and get the data from the database. And then finally, it will uh, gather all that information and send it to the view. So this is how we organize the MVC. Now, just listening to this doesn't give you a good idea until we start coding, then you can see how the MVC system actually works. So I'll delete all this and let's go back to business. Okay. So um, at this point, what I want to do is I'll ask if a file exists in the controllers there because the first item, remember, it should be the controller. So here I will, did I copy that? Yes, I did. Okay, there we go. So URL is equal to that. So what I would do now is get the very first item. Okay, so the very first item is going to be the controller name. So I'm just going to say this controller. So I'm talking about this variable right there. So that controller will be equal to uh, URL zero. Now keep in mind that there will always be one item at least in here because whether we have an item there or not, they will be home. Now all I need to know is if this file actually exists. But before I even set it to this, so I'm just going to say if file exists, right? If file exists, this, okay? So if that file is in existence, then we are good to go. Okay. Now, if it isn't, that's okay because we already have set the controller to a default. Okay, that's fine. So we will go to that default instead. So if file exists zero, now it has to know to look for the files in the controllers. So in here, I will put a prefix dot 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 slash. Now keep in mind that this is in reference to the uh, to the public index page here. So everything we are looking for here is in reference to the index page is relative to this. So we have to go a folder up into private and then controllers. So we do that and say private slash controllers and then dot like so. And then at the end, we have to put the dot PHP. Now, a lot of people get confused here, so don't forget the extra dot here, okay? This dot is for concatenating. This one is for the fire extension, so keep that in mind. Don't miss that. Don't miss this. Look at this very carefully and put it like that. So if the file does exist, then we're going to set it. So we're going to say this controller is equal to uh, whatever is in there zero. Okay, and then regardless whether we found it or not, uh, we still need to load a controller at least. So here, this is what we're going to do. We're going to say include or require. So we're going to require a file. Now that file should be inside here and there. So let me copy this and put it there. So imagine if the file was found, we've set it to this controller, copy. If it wasn't found, the controller still is set to home, so we are good. So I'll put this here instead, like so. 
So whatever this controller is, in our case, it will be home. So it's going to be private controllers home.php. Okay, so there should be that file. And then if that file exists, what we will do now is set it to something. I'll just say uh, controller. Uh, let's just use the same controller here. This controller will be equal to new this controller. Boom, like so. So what we are doing here is exactly like what we are doing here. So we are just telling it to create a new instance of the app or the class. So in this case, uh, where is this app? We're just telling it that we want a new instance of whatever is in here. In our case, this is home. So it's the same as saying, uh, put inside this controller, it's equal to new home with these slashes, these brackets there. Okay, but if the file does not exist, we're going to have errors. So in order to make sure that we never have errors, we must put at least a default home page there. If I try to run this right now, I'll get an error. It will tell me failed to open stream, no such file exists. It's looking for this file, you, you see there, home. Now, if I type, um, wait, the students there, right? It should be looking for students. So, warning require controllers home.php. So that is a problem. So if file exists, private controllers, okay. So the reason it's looking for home is because even the students does not exist. So it goes to home and it found that doesn't exist either. So we just need to go to the controllers, right click new file. And let's just put a PHP tag there. And then let's name this one home.php. Okay. Then save it. So controllers home.php. Great. So now it should have that file. So let me just echo and say this is the home controller like so. Okay. So if I now right click, you see this is the home controller. Now it's still telling me that uncaught error class home not found. The reason is because I'm telling it to create a new instance of that class. So in here, we must create a class. So let's just say something like class uh, main controller, uh, home controller. Let me just say home controller there. Now it's going to extend another class. So let's just say extends controller like that with a capital C. Now we haven't created controller. So just hold on a minute, home like that. So this is called class home extends controller. Okay, so that's good. Let's remove the argument here. We don't actually need the constructor, but that's okay. Now it should extend controller. Now controller will be inside the core. So let's create controller there. So right click in the core, new file. Now the reason we are doing this is because there are common uh, functions that we want to run in the controller. So we'll create a mother controller that will contain all those functionalities in advance so that we don't have to type them every time. So I'm just going to call this one controller.php. So what we are doing is inheriting some stuff from there. So this is the main controller class. So it won't extend any other class. So it will just be called controller. So controller like this, like so. So let's remove that. I think just the argument is enough. Okay, so back to the uh, here. So the home is extending the main controller. The reason we are extending is because whatever I put, whatever functions I add in the controller here will automatically be available to the home controller as well because it's extending the parent. So that way, instead of every single controller having similar functions, we can just put them inside this main controller and then we can be able to utilize them here even though we don't declare them as functions. Okay, so good. Up to this point, I think we are okay. Now I can echo this 
from inside the constructor so this is the home controller so back here everything should be fine and if i refresh okay so uncode class controller not found this is because like i said you must include every file that you create in the core must be added to the auto load so never forget that so i'm just going to add this maybe at the top there and say controller dot php so every file in this core folder should be part of the auto load right here so now if i come back and refresh everything should run fine this is the home controller so i have students there refresh it's still saying this is the home controller now all i need to do to create a new page is simply to go to my controllers right click on controller new file and then i'll copy whatever is in the home controller here copy paste it in here and then change this to students like that okay it extends controller as well this is the students controller save this okay i'll save this one as students.php so it's important that the class name and the file name are exactly the same as in the text is the same it's not case sensitive so don't worry about it so if i now refresh you see i'm in the students controller if i remove all this i'm in the home controller or if i write home there i'm in the home controller or if i write students i'm in the students controller now so this is how we change pages just by typing a different text at the top there so this becomes very easy to create new pages as you can imagine Okay, so in the next video, let's see how we can load the method as well. I'll see you then.